want to pray king of kings and lord of lords we want to pray for the nations of morocco we pray for the nation of libya mighty god we pray for our brothers and sisters families who have been affected oh god by the floods and the earthquake oh god the survivors oh god we pray for them that may you comfort them may you touch them oh god may you release the angels oh god the rescue and the support of oh God that they need at a time as this. In the mighty name, the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Today, uh, please, I'll ask our children, uh, get your books and uh, your notebooks and the Bibles, even as we, as we learn and as we pray. Uh, Jonathan, if you get this mic to dad and yourself, we'll be reading some uh, some scriptures, even as we as we trust God today. We are looking at uh, the teaching or the ministry of angels. The ministry of angels. The protection and the leading that the angels offer. To each one of us, uh, we have been privileged. We've been uh, learning about the ministry of angels. It's a doctrine that is in the Bible, and as we learn about the angels, I want us to trust God that we will be able to enjoy the ministration of the angels. <laughs> Some of the questions that we need to answer is what are angels for? Or what are angels? Who are the angels? What are angels for? Why should we consider the subject of angels? I want us to read Psalm 91 as we begin to look at the protection and the guidance of angels. Psalm 91 verse 11 Psalm 91 verse 11 Why should we study angels? The six questions that we normally ask is the what the what of angels what are angels? Number two question is why should I consider angels? How will I know to say I'm experiencing the visitation of God's messengers. Why are the angels? How can I know that God has sent the angels? When I experience the angels, then what? Why? Why? How? And where is it written that angels exist? And in the Bible, in the 66 books of the Bible, 300 times, 300 times, angels are referred to in the scriptures. 300 times, meaning it's a big subject and topic. Just like we study the doctrine of Jesus Christ. What is a doctrine? A doctrine is a set of teaching on a particular subject and then as you look at this subject then you go if it comes to the doctrine of the Bible you go into the Bible into all the 66 books and then you are saying all I want is to learn about God what does the book of Genesis say about God if you are dealing with the doctrine of God the doctrine of Jesus Christ the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. So you go to the Bible and find the scriptures from different books, different sections of the Bible, and then you begin to compare them. What do they say about this subject? That's how our forefathers and uh, the leaders in the Christendom, in the Christian kingdom or Christian faith, they have come up with the doctrines, specific subject, and then go to the scriptures. What does the whole Bible say 
about this doctrine. There are people that come up with doctrines, they read one scripture or one book, and then they say, we are going to develop a doctrine. I'll give you an example I want us to understand because the doctrine of angels or the teaching of angels uh, is uh, not so much taught, but we have heard about angels. Maybe at your place of work, somebody told you to say, oh, you are an angel. What did they mean? Or maybe you have heard somebody to say, I had an encounter with an angel. During Christmas stories, some children, they perform in the play, Christmas uh, play, as angels. Oh, my son is going, my daughter is going to act as an angel. What is an angel? Who is an angel? Why should we consider angels? So when it comes to the teaching and the doctrine of angels, then we begin to realize to say, God gives uh, attention to this subject, mentioned 300 times. So these are some of the things that we are going to be looking at, the doctrine of angels, or the teaching about angels. And one of the questions I want you to keep at the back of your mind is, what do you know about angels? What have you heard about angels? Let's go to Pastor Bonfessa, and he's the man that uh, started, uh, uh, God uh, led him uh, uh, to the teaching on the angels, and he's still taking us through every Friday on the subject of angel. and then we began to realize God is saying something to all of us uh, when Pastor Bonfess began uh, to teach us on the subject uh, of angels, and then we began to look at it in depth. And now we are trying to, all of us, to go together as a, as a church. Let's go to, uh, to the scriptures. Psalm 91, verse 11. Uh, you can give us Psalm 91, verse 11. It will be on the, on the screen. Uh, let's read that scripture as we look at uh, the leading and the protective, that or the protection or protective and leading of angels. Let's go to Psalm 91, verse 11. Psalm 91, verse 11. The Bible reads, For he who, for he will command his angels concerning you, to guide you in all your ways, they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Amen. Who said those words? God said those words uh, through his servant, the psalmist. What did he say? We just find here this scripture where the Bible tells us to say angels do exist. We shall expel and expose some of uh, the myth, some of the wrong teachings that people have taught. Some people say angels do not exist. The Bible here is telling us angels exist. Why do we know that angels exist and how do we know? Because a scripture that we have just read in Psalm 91 verse 11 tells us, He shall give charge, he shall give command, David, God is giving command to your angels. All of us in here, we've got angels. You may not see them, but angels are commanded by God. Just from that scripture, we can tell who commands angels. Is it us commanding angels or God commanding angels according to Psalm 91? It is uh, who is commanding angels so they can come and minister to us. God is the only one. Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit are the only three of the Trinity who can command angels. Then the angels do what? Come and do the work they have been commanded to do. Is that clear? It's a very, it's a very important point. Because some people, they go out and say, oh, I'm going to command my angel to come and rescue. No, it's not you as an individual to command the angels. 
it's God because that is the chief commander. The way the angels operate is the same way that the army, uh, people in the army operate. If I go into a barrack right now as a pastor, and then start telling uh, sergeants and the, uh, the, the ranking in the army to say, come here, kneel down, move to the right. They will arrest me, they might beat me up and throw me into, into their guard room. Why? Because those guys, they are not under my command. In the church, I can say things to my members, to the members in the church and give instructions. But in the army or other places, I have no uh, jurisdiction to go and command. When it comes to the angels, they are commanded by God. They are commanded by the Holy Spirit. They are commanded by Jesus. In short, angels can be instructed only by God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. What instruction are they commanded to do? That's what scripture is telling us in Psalms 91. For he shall give angels charge over you. God will command angels. Then angels will do what? Will come to you and save you. So you and me, we cannot command angels. Angels are commanded by God. So they can come and minister to us. So they can come and rescue us. And as they come, they can even lift us, according to this scripture, so that you don't get into trouble, so that you don't uh, stumble, so you don't fall into trouble. Those are some of uh, the things that angels come to do. Jonathan, if you are riding a bicycle and you are about, for example, uh, to be uh, smashed by the car, God can command an angel within a split of a second to take you out of uh, the road and then you look back and say, how did I manage to swerve that high speed car, that train? And these are some of the things that we don't realize. How the angels have carried us. They are people that we have been told they are about to be killed. One example is the man of God, uh, John Hurd of America, Cornerstone Church. Some thugs planned to shoot him. And this gunman went into the church building to gun him down. And this man, where he stood, this thug, and lifted up the gun and pointed straight at John Hege and released the gun. How the bullet made a cave and went into the wall, the police says they couldn't understand. The forensic science went into the building. This man was arrested, taken, and they said where the man was standing is here. Where the bullet went is there. Where the pastor was standing is here. How the bullet moved out of its course, then bended and went into the wall. They couldn't understand somebody beyond human imagination swung that uh, bullet away from the man of God. Accidents that could have happened to you. There are people that they are born in the hospitals, we had the testimony as Pastor Bonfess was saying, I'm sure Mama Mamboy can still remember that testimony. Was it Jemima or David? Jemima when she was being born. A lady came into the hospital. We look forward to hearing that testimony. And was he helping her and encouraging her, uh, Minister Miriam. Uh, and uh, when she came back from theater, we are told, she asked for that lady to say, where is that lady who was helping me? She says, where is that lady? What's her name? We don't know that person. And that person disappeared. God releases angels. Angels, even in this room where we are right now, they are angels, full of angels. You may not see them, but they are commanded by God. They are released by God. Give us the next slide. Let's move on with the angels. 
So when we are talking of uh, angels, uh, angels are created beings. They are created by God, as I mentioned. The doctrine of angels is a subject that deals with the study of angels, good angels of God. All angels, including the bad angels, were created by God, but they rebelled against God. Who can tell me one of the angels that rebelled against God? That you know. David, which one? Huh? Which one do you know who has become a bad angel? He was a good angel, now he has become a bad angel. Yes, sister, yes. Lucifer, the one we call the devil, he was an angel the morning star. The name Lucifer is the name of an angel. He was a morning star. He was in charge of the heavenly choir and he could sing. And they would uh, give uh, uh, harmony music uh, before the presence of God. So you find that one of the bad angels who fell and were ejected from heaven is Lucifer, now called the devil. So we are dealing with the doctrine of angels. What we call demons, they are fallen angels. They were serving God, living in heaven, but they began to plan to rebel against God. Lucifer was leading them, and God says, in heaven there is no rebellion. You live by instruction of God, and you live by the standards of God. So they were thrown out of heaven. Some of them, as we shall see, they have been jailed, awaiting to be thrown into the lake of fire, when the judgment day comes, we will look at that. They are chained in dark places by God because they rebelled against God. Let's move on to the next slide. Exodus, uh, we'll be moving to the uh, third uh, slide. And let's see what the scripture uh, say. We have mentioned, angels are mentioned 300 times. Let's move on to the next uh, uh, slide. So if God has uh, mentioned in the Bible, 66 books, 300 times, then it's a very important subject. If the angels are important to God, then they must be important to us. Okay, so now let's look at uh, these angels. Who are angels? What are angels? Angels are created beings. They have been created by God. Just like you and me, we are created by God. But angels were created before us. Before human beings were created, angels were created. In Greek, in which the New Testament was written, is angelos. It's the word angelos. What does angelos mean? Messenger. Somebody, you give him a message, they take that message, and they bring it the way it is without changing it. All of us, we are messengers of God. We are supposed to be taking the message of God to the entire world. And uh, these angels were created by God. Let's go to Genesis chapter number 1 and verse 31. Uh, Jemima, if you can read Genesis chapter number 1 and verse 31. Let's hear that. Eliezer, if you can read Jude. Jude is only one chapter, and you read verse 6. Jemima, if you can read for us Genesis, the first book of the Bible, because we need to start from the beginning, and then we'll be moving on. So the angels, the subject of angels, are throughout the Bible. Genesis 1, verse 31. What does the Bible say? Genesis 1, and verse 31. So the evening and the morning. 31. God saw everything that he had made, and be behold, it was very good. And he redated it completely. And there was evening, and there was morning, and sixth day. Amen. All things were created by who? By God. 
So angels, human beings, everything we see were created by God. The, bang, the, the, the big bang and all that stuff, uh, forget about those uh, 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 things. Let's go to Jude verse 6. Jude verse 6. What does the Bible say? Jude verse 6. Jude verse 6. Jude chapter 1 verse 6. There is only one chapter. Let's hear what the Bible says. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode, he was reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Amen. So these created beings, we are talking about angels. Some of these angels, what did they do? They rebelled. They did not stay within their confinement. They did not live according to what God had created them for. Genesis 1 tells us God created everything. It was perfect. It was good, including the angels. They were created and God created all the things and it was good. But when these angels began to enjoy the heavenly things and the work that God was giving them, what went into their hearts? They begin to boast. They begin to try to fight God. And Jude chapter number one, which is only one chapter, verse six, it tells us, maybe let me read verse five as well. Give us verse five on the screen as well. Five and six. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe, is warning us to say, as much as we are created beings, if we don't abide by what God says, we are going to be judged. And verse 6, And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, who did not stay according to the calling that God had called them to do and the functions that God gave them, but left their own abode. He, reserved, they, he has reserved in everlasting chains in darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in, in similar manner, to those having around them in similar manner given themselves to sexual immorality and gone after their own strange flesh are set forth an example suffering the vengeance that is coming uh, that is uh, uh, going to be judged why the angels there in that scripture in Jude 6 they were created by God to function according to God's plan but you know what they did they left what God had made them to be doing and started doing strange things. And God has chained them and put them in dark places, dark prisons until that day when the, their leader, the devil, is thrown into the lake of fire. All these angels that fell have been thrown in there. And there we can see angels don't die. Amen. We see these angels from the time they rebelled before you and me we were born. The angels, some of them who rebelled, where are they? They have been kept in chains, in dark places, in prison, known by God. And they are still there. So people with the theology where they are watering down the word of God, oh God is a good God, he cannot judge. The Bible tells us that if he did not spare the angels, how is he going to spare you and me if we do things that are contrary to the word of God? So we must do things according to the word of God. But today we are just concentrating on the angels. So we learn now that angels are created beings. Let's go to 2 Peter. Uh, Shekana, if you can read for us. 2 Peter chapter number 2 and verse 4. Miriam, uh, our minister Miriam, if you can read Revelation 5, verse 11. 2 Peter 2, verse 4. 2 Peter 2, verse 4. Sister Shekana, 
uh, Minister Miriam Mambo, if you read for us, Revelation 5, verse 11. Those who are writing, please write those scriptures. Even those that are joining us by Zoom and other platforms, uh, please re write these scriptures. We are dealing with the, a doctrine, so the scriptures must agree with other scriptures. That is how we know that the word of God is true. Because the scriptures agree, must agree with other scriptures. If what somebody is teaching you about God is contrary to the word of God, cannot agree with what is in other books, forget about it. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4. Yes, Shekinah. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4. Then we will move on to Revelation 5. 11. Yes, Sister Shekinah, 2 Peter 2 4, we are dealing with angels, the teaching about angels, the doctrine of angels. For if God did not even speak Loudly. that sinned, but threw them into hell and sent them to pits of gloom to be kept there for judgment. Jude and Peter, they are agreeing. Can you see there? The Bible says, For if God did not even spare angels that sinned but threw them into hell and sent them to pits of gloomy dark places to be kept there until the, the day of judgment. So you discover that the scripture confirms the scripture. What Jude says in uh, chapter 1 verse 6 is what Peter chapter 2 Verse 4 is confirming. If you want to prove the word of God, the best way to prove the word of God is not what the man of God said or what the woman of God said. Find other scriptures that agree with that scripture. One scripture we have just looked at is 2 Peter 2 verse 4 and Jude chapter number 1 verse 6. God took the angels who rebelled and put them in dark pits, in prisons, in chains, and they are awaiting judgment. So angels, when they rebel against God, they face judgment. You and me, if we don't obey God, will face judgment. And these are some of the things that contemporary Christians, we don't understand. When we talk of judgment, oh, how can God punish people? He is a good God. We all want to see the good side of God. But the same God, who is a good God, he has told us what we must be doing. If we go against the word of God, we will face the same wrath that these angels faced. Let's go to Revelation 5, 11, Minister uh, Miriam. Revelation, the last book of the Bible, chapter number 5. And verse 11, what does the Bible say? Uh, is the mic on? And again I looked and I heard angels, thousands and millions of them. They stood round, they stood round the throne for the living, the four living creatures and elders. Maybe you can read the next verse as well. And sang in a loud voice, The Lamb who was killed is worthy to receive power, wealth, wisdom, and strength, honor, glory, and praise. Amen. So, these scriptures, uh, remember, we are dealing with the doctrine or the subject of angels. These angels, the John the Liberator, he wrote this in the New Testament. Remember, we are going to see more of what we saw in um, Psalms 91, verse 11, where the Bible told us that God will command angels. We have seen in Peter, we have seen uh, in Jude, in the New Testament. So the subject is uh, covered throughout the Bible. Here, the last book which was written after Jesus had gone back to heaven, they are talking about angels. And you'll be amazed that the book of Revelation it deals so much with angels, 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 angels. So angels are real. 
So those who don't believe in angels, I don't know which Bible they read. But for you and me, we are learning about angels 